Okay, so if I look at my stage, I can see the last frame. In this frame, I'm moving my creature's mouth up. I haven't played with the atmosphere yet. I'm going to start taking the atmosphere down a little bit to make it kind of reveal my creature. And I was just sharpening the creature's mouth a little with the sharpen tool. Remember, you can do these things. I can also burn the inside of the mouth a little bit. Remember, when I use the burn tool or the dodge tool, I want it to be at an exposure of less than 20. I want it to be a soft brush, fairly large. And now I can burn inside the mouth a little bit to give that distinction. And as long as I'm doing these, these changes frame to frame, it will make sense. And it won't seem like too much. While I'm doing that, I might as well burn a little bit underneath the jaw. So it really makes it look like the jaw is opening. And maybe a little bit on this arm, which feels like it's catching a little too much light. And by doing it there, next when I duplicate, all of those burns will still be there, right? And all of those sharpens. Okay, now, I select it all. Go up to my topmost layer that's visible and not locked. Hold down Option. Layer, merge visible, command C to copy, command V to paste it in. And then I can say, well, is that enough? Because I like it, but maybe I need to move my creature a little bit. So this is a good time to run an animation test. You know what I think I, it is, is I want to bring that back down a little bit before I run that animation test. So on the stage, you can just play with the, the eyeballs and kind of see what changes you might want to make. And sometimes you have to do this. You have to just throw that frame away and just tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to use Puppet Warp. And I want that squash and squish. So instead of the head just moving up, I also want it to squish back a little like that that will look pretty menacing which is good okay now same thing select it topmost visible layer option layer merge visible command c command v Paste it in. Yeah, that feels better. Now, I'm noticing this. I don't love that. The, the hand is showing under the raspberry. How can I fix that? I'm going to show you, without having to redo those frames, Command D, Delete. I'm going to show you how we can use internal compositing to fix this, because it's a small thing. What I'm going to do is steal some from the raspberry here, make a little mask. Just like that, duplicate it, stretch it so that it covers up that hand, move it underneath the raspberry, but on top of the hand, right? And now I'm going to copy that, select all, command C, go here, paste it in as a mask, actually I have a better way, okay, now I'm going to merge it all, option, I'll go to the very top, layer, merge visible while holding down option, select out that mask, just the bottom of the raspberry, copy it, paste that over, the top here. Move it in so it fits. Everything should be at the exact same resolution. It looks like I need to stretch it a little. Okay. 
There we go. Move it slightly. All right, now I need to add that to every frame. So how can I do that? I'm going to duplicate it a bunch of times. And then for each frame that needs it, because it will show up in the motion, even if you don't notice it, that's the first place it doesn't show up. Here, I need it. So I'm going to turn those on, and then I'm going to combine them. Command E, move that down. Next one, turn them on, select them both, combine them. Command E, move it down. Turn it on, use this, combine them. Move it down. Let's get them in the right order. Good. Everything can be fixed. Oh, I need this one. Everything can be fixed. You just have to be aware of it and know how to control each pixel. And so the stage is really where you're kind of scrutinizing, are things changing in a way that I want them to? Okay, I don't need these anymore. And I've patched that little issue. And now I start to see that there's something here. A little hole. Okay, so I'm going to do a patch there. Now this time I'm going to do a patch behind. So I'm going to take my raspberry stuff, I'm going to run it behind. Oh yeah, that's not going to work on these merged layers. Let me see. So I need to go into here, Delete this. Turn my creature off. And I got to steal this now. So I'm going to merge everything. <laughs> this is before you get too far. This is why we run little animation tests. I'm finding little holes that need to be patched. This doesn't always happen, but just because of the size of my creature in this environment. So there's my patch. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move it over, put it on top. And it needs to patch in this little gap. And I need multiples of it. And then first I need it with this layer. Do I need it with the one underneath? No. So I merge those two. Then I need it with this layer. Because in the animation, that's going to really be irksome. There's that little window that keeps flickering. So in animation, you can see changes that you wouldn't really see just panel by panel. So little patches. Now let's run an animation test. Always save it before you do this. You open up your timeline into the window. Mine is open. You set it to frame by frame animation. You output the frame animation so you get this kind of timeline. Then I go to the layer or the timeline window options and I say make frames from layers. Then I 
drag that white one, which is the background, to the trash. I hold down Shift, select all of them, select on the timing, say other, say 0.3, that's my default. And then I play it forever. And my creature moves, and you can't even tell the squash and squish, but it is there and it helps. And it looks like he's about to eat it. So, success. The syrup moves a little bit here, but now it's going to stay put. It's like his body pushed it a little bit, which isn't bad. So now, that's my last frame. I would say that maybe between these two frames, the atmosphere changes a little too much, but that's easy to fix. And I don't need to worry about that right now. So I'm going to select them all, drag them all to the trash. Save again. Go to my last frame that's turned on. And now build the next. Okay. Turn my creature on. Oh, I did something wrong. Let me see. What's going on here? Okay, there we go. So this was the last frame I had. I'm going to play with the atmosphere. Keep taking it down a little bit. And now if I look on my storyboard, I've gotten to here, and the action now is everything gets sucked into the mouth. Okay, so at this point, I'll keep playing with the atmosphere, just back and forth. But now... I'm going to start playing first with the licorice. And I'm going to duplicate that. And instead of the creature being animated, the creature is going to hold still, and this the environment's going to start to transform and change. So this licorice, I'm not going to bother with puppet warp. I'm just going to go straight to control T and regular warping. And I'm going to have it start bend, bending towards and lifting up into this guy's mouth. And the trick is, as it goes into the mouth, I need to start erasing it away. So it looks like it actually enters his mouth. Now I can also do this in a quicker way, which might be a little bit more elegant, which is to go to my, my character layer and select that edge Again, it's all layers, even that little tooth. And then this tooth. And let me refine that selection. We're getting a little bit more of the tooth. But this I'll do a mask on top. Flatten it out there a little bit. Extend this tooth a little bit. Maybe sharpen it a little bit more. This is our hero shot. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate that mask of the head. <laughs> And I'm going to move it on top of the other stuff. Now turn off the drop shadow. 
or maybe tone down the drop shadow just a little bit. 